Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be using our Ninja Foodie pressure cooker to make wasabi mashed potatoes. You've probably never heard of it because I just kind of made it up, but once you try it, I guarantee you're gonna love it. So you ready? Let's get into this. For our recipe, we're gonna need some russet potatoes, some salt and granulated garlic, a little bit of butter, some black pepper, a little bit of sour cream, some half and half, and some prepared wasabi. If you'd like to make this recipe, all the ingredients and measurements are down in the description of the video, along with the calorie count, the protein, the carbs, and the fat. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get all these potatoes peeled, and also we're gonna quarter them so they'll cook a little bit faster. Before you do anything, be sure to clean these first though. Now that we have those peeled, we're gonna take our pressure cooker pot and we'll put the metal rack inside. Originally I said to quarter them, but it all just kind of depends on how big your potatoes are. I would cut them as small as you can without cutting them so small that they're gonna fall through the slats or something like that. Once you got those looking like this, we'll be ready to start pressure cooking. So we're gonna put our potatoes into the pressure cooker and we're gonna add two cups of water. Next, we'll close this up, turn on your pressure cooker, put it into pressure cooking mode, and we're gonna leave it on high and set the pressure cook time to eight minutes. Before you start this up, be sure to make sure the pressure valve is set to seal. And with these ninjas, that's pretty easy because it's just kind of flopping around. Once you've done that, we can start her up. One eternity later. And once the pressure cook gets done, just be sure to let it sit for about five minutes or so before you release the steam. That's my French Bulldog, Bean. Say hi, Bean. Bean. All right, it's been five minutes. Let's release the steam. All right, let's see how these turned out. Oh, those are perfect. You can tell if the potatoes are done because you can take a fork and stick them into one of these pieces and it should still be firm, but you should be able to put the fork through it without too much effort. So what we wanna do now is remove our basket of potatoes, just sort of set them on the side just for a minute, and we're gonna empty out this water. Now we can transfer our potatoes back into the pot and we wanna mash these up. Preferably, we'd want to use a potato masher, but since we're using the Ninja Pot, we don't want to scratch up the nonstick surface. So if you don't have a Teflon one, you should use something like a wooden spoon instead. These should be nice and soft though, so you're not really gonna have a problem using the spoon anyway. How much you mash these is gonna depend on how you like your mashed potatoes. Some people like them really smooth with no lumps at all. Some people like them a little bit lumpy like this. If you wanna make this ultra smooth, you can also use an immersion blender after we get everything mixed together. And that'll turn it into a really nice smooth puree. Okay, so the first thing we'll add in is the butter. Just kind of mix that in just a little bit. The butter probably should be at room temperature just so it'll melt a little bit easier. But once you bury it in there in the potatoes, that's gonna melt it down quite a bit by itself. Next, we'll add in our sour cream and mix that in really good. Then our half and half. The amount of half and half you use in this is gonna determine how creamy it is. I don't recommend putting in a ton of it all at once. You should just put it in a little bit at a time and then mix everything up and you'll be able to see what kind of difference it makes. That way you don't end up making soupy mashed potatoes on accident. It's a lot easier to thin it out than it is to thicken it back up, know what I mean? Next we'll add in our herbs. Notice I didn't add in the pepper. The pepper is gonna be the last thing that goes into this. And the reason for that is the pepper is gonna turn it dark. And we don't want our potatoes to be gray. We just want some speckles of pepper in there. Next, we'll put in our wasabi. And once you're happy with the consistency on your mashed potatoes, then we can add in the pepper at the very end and just kind of stir it in. Remember, we don't want to color these mashed potatoes too much, so just enough to get it combined without having one bite that's got all the pepper in it, because that would be disgusting. Might be kind of funny though, depending on who bites into that, right? I personally like my mashed potatoes to where 
you can put the spoon in there and it'll still stand up straight. If you like them that way too, then at this point we're done and we can plate up. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. I really hope you try all these mashed potatoes and really you don't have to use your pressure cooker to cook the potatoes. You could just boil them in a pot, drain them and do the rest of the recipe the same way. However, if you do it this way, it's a little bit faster and there's a lot less mess. And that's a good thing because once you have these, you're going to be making them a lot. A lot. A lot. If you like this video, you might like this recipe video right here where we used our Ninja Foodie pressure cooker to make a great grilled cheese sandwich. That you don't want to miss. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon. And until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.